door. There's another story coming right up. And you can always learn more about Theodore Tugboat on the internet. Find us through PBS Online. Pushing and a pulling in the great big harbor. In the great big world is so much fun. So many brand new things to discover. Waking with the sun, gotta get the job done. Oh, Theodore and Emily. Vote up Hank and George and the harbor master too. Thank you, Hillary. Yeah, see you tomorrow. Hello. Look what I just got in the mail. I wonder what it could be. See, I wasn't expecting anything, so I don't... Oh, look at that. Tugboat cookies. My favorite. Oh, there's a note. Dear son. Oh, I know these are your favorite. Enjoy them. Love, Mom. Oh, isn't that sweet of her? It's just in time for my snack. I think I have a few of these cookies right now. Yes. Actually, there. One. Two. Three. Don't they look yummy? Huh? Isn't it nice when someone thinks of you? You know, that's something that Bedford Bowie would say. You know Bedford. Bedford Bowie. Yeah. Lives, lives, lives right out there. Bedford Bowie was waiting patiently while Hank brought Barrington Barge over for a visit. <laughs> Hank tooted hello to the little Bowie, who lived out of the entrance of the harbor. Hi, Hank, what are you doing? We're taking these pipes to the oil refinery, he announced, showing off Barrington's cargo. Bedford dinged his bell with appreciation. Nice, he said. A moment later, Constance, the Coast Guard ship, appeared. I was patrolling along the coast, she called to Hank and I saw an iceberg. How big was it? Bedford wanted to know. It was almost as tall as Benjamin Bridge, replied Constance. Benjamin's really big, said Bedford. Ahoy there, Bedford! A familiar voice called out. It was Bedeck, the buoy boat. I'm delivering a load of bell buoys to the harbor, said Bedeck. They look ship-shape, said Bedford, as he turned to inspect the new buoys. No bells on all of them, called Bedeck, as he continued along into the harbor. <laughs> that was Theodore's whistle. Now he was coming for a visit. You see, since Bedford always stayed in one spot and couldn't see the harbor for himself, everyone liked to make a special visit and bring the harbor to Bedford. Bedford bobbed up and down and dinged his little bell. A visit from Theodore was the most special of all. Bedford, called Theodore. I just took Clara, the cargo ship, out to the ocean. Can you guess what she was loaded with? No, replied Bedford. Bicycles, shouted Theodore. Bicycles, repeated Bedford, as if he had never heard such a wonderful word. Just then, George roared up. All the tugs are having a race around the harbor, he announced. Well, Theodore loved racing, but he hadn't told all his stories to Bedford. I'll meet you later, he called to George. Now let's see, what else did I do today? Theodore began. I, I took Geisbro the garbage barge to the dump. Oh, and I put oil in my tank, took Clara and her bicycles out. Theodore could hear the tugs already beginning the race. He really wanted to join them, so he speeded up too. Then I, I, I visited you. I mean, I'm still visiting you, and, uh... Oh, what was I saying? Frowned Theodore. Tug sure sounded like they were having fun. Uh, oh, yes, he continued. Uh, I put bicycles in my tank, I uh, oiled guys, bro, took Claire to the dump, and... Theodore, Bedford interrupted. I think I'm tired now. Tired? Repeated Theodore. But, Bedford, you haven't done anything today. I know, said Bedford in a very quiet voice. Well, if you're sure, Theodore said. I'll, I'll see you tomorrow, and I'll tell you all about the race. I wonder what's bothering Bedford, Theodore said to himself. Theodore caught up with George, who was racing around Willie's Island. George, Theodore called. Does Bedford seem a little bothered lately? Hard to tell with boys, answered George. Well, Theodore went on. He's acting kind of quiet. 
He's staying in his spot, isn't he? said George. Oh, sure, said Theodore. Well, that's the important thing, concluded George. George broomed his big engine and raced on ahead. But Theodore slowed down. Staying in his spot, he repeated to himself. That's it, he shouted. Bedford, tomorrow you and I are going on a big adventure. First thing the next morning, Theodore went to have a talk with Bedeck. The buoy boat was just finishing putting a new buoy in his spot. Theodore told Bedeck all about the adventure he was planning with Bedford. Well, that sounds like a wonderful idea, said Bedeck. The two set off right then and there. Theodore smiled. He couldn't wait to see Bedford's face when he told him the surprise. Bedford! Theodore called as he cruised towards the bell buoy. Guess what we're going to do today? What? said Bedford. Well, usually, I only tell you about things in the big harbor, Theodore explained. But today, I'm taking you to see the big harbor. That sounds great, shouted Bedford. Bedeck began to lower another buoy into the water to watch Bedford's spot. And Theodore moved closer to haul Bedford out of the water. Hang on to your bell, Bedford, he grinned. The fun is just beginning. With Bedford riding up snugly beside him, Theodore began the harbor tour. There's Benjamin, he called to the buoy. He looks much bigger from here, said Bedford. And over there is where Rebecca lives, said Theodore. Rebecca the research vessel was floating in her dock at the Oceanic Institute. Rebecca and I always find things underwater, continued Theodore. Northumberland submarine comes too. We found an old ship's bell once. Finding a bell would be nice, said the bellboy. Theodore, I'm going exploring now, called Rebecca. Would you like to come with me? I would, said Theodore, sounding a little disappointed. But right now, I I'm busy with Bedford. Theodore's taking me to see the harbor, Bedford proudly explained. Maybe next time, Theodore, said Rebecca. Theodore said goodbye to Rebecca and continued on the tour. Just then, they saw Sigrid, the supply ship. Hi, Theodore, called Sigrid. I'm taking Owen, the oil rig, his supplies out on the ocean. Uh, can you come with me? Oh, that'd be fun, smiled Theodore. Then he remembered Bedford. Except, right now I'm having fun with Bedford. A moment later, Hank came hurrying by. Theodore, don't forget that you're going to show me where you found that driftwood the waves washed up last night. Yes, Hank. As soon as I finish showing Bedford around, said Theodore. <laughs> Hank tooted and continued on his way. Theodore, said Bedford, you sure have a lot of friends. Oh, everyone in the big harbor is my friend, said Theodore. And it sure sounds like you have lots of fun with them, continued Bedford. Sure, like us. Oh, we have lots of fun together too, said Theodore. I tell you things and you, you, you listen. It's not the same, said Bedford. I think I'd like to go back to my spot now. Well, at first, Theodore thought Bedford was making a joke. But it was always kind of hard to tell if the bell buoy was smiling. Somehow, this time, Theodore knew he wasn't. A little later that day, Bedford was back in his spot. Bedeck was leaving the harbor for home again when he heard the little bell buoy calling him. Bedeck, called Bedford. Yes, Bedford? Bedeck headed over, thinking Bedford wanted to say goodbye to him. Um, I've been thinking that I, I'd like to leave the harbor, said Bedford. Leave the harbor, repeated Bedeck. Can you take me to another harbor, said Bedford. Well, Bedeck said slowly, I suppose I could see if there are any replacement boys to take your spot. Thank you, said Bedford.
Badek didn't go see about a replacement buoy. Not then. He went to see Theodore. Bedford wants to leave the harbor, he told his friend. That's a great idea, smiled Theodore. Maybe tomorrow I can take him to Cayley's Cove, and then... No, interrupted Badek. I mean, he wants to go and live in another harbor. But why, said Theodore, who was very surprised. I don't know, replied Badek. But I thought I should tell you. Theodore was so surprised and upset that it felt like something had broken deep inside his engine. I better go talk to him, he said at last. Theodore and Bedeck floated out together to see Bedford. A moment later, Hank arrived, and then Pearl and Petra, the pilot boats, and even Rebecca. Everyone had heard that Bedford was leaving. Hi, Bedford. Hi, Theodore. Bedeck said that you want to go and live in another harbor, said Theodore. Yes, Theodore, said Bedford quietly. I do. Are you sure there's nothing I can say to make you change your mind, said Theodore. I think I have to go, replied Bedford. Goodbye, Theodore. Goodbye, Bedford, said Theodore. Ready for hauling up, Bedford called to Bedeck. Deck, slowly began to raise Bedford up to his deck. Theodore couldn't watch his friend leave. We better go, said Rebecca gently. Bedford dinged his little bell one last time. Stop, Theodore suddenly shouted. Bedford, you can't leave. We, we love you. Bedeck, called Bedford quietly. Could you put me down again, please? Down, repeated Bedeck. Yes, said Bedford. This, this is my home. Bedeck lowered Bedford back into the water, and Theodore floated very close to his friend. Theodore, you never said that before, Bedford said softly. I love you, too. Well, it was always hard to tell with boys, but just then, if you'd have asked anyone there, they'd have told you that at that moment, Bedford was most definitely smiling. Bedford certainly is special to all of us here in the Big Harbor. Thanks for visiting us. We'll see you all again next time. Now, there's someone else who's really special to me. Hello, Mom? I got the cookies you sent. Yeah, they look yummy. You're the best mom in the whole wide world. Yeah, I love you. Thank you, Mom. Bye. Oh, I can feel her smile all the way over the phone. And now... Time for my snack. Delicious. Theodore.